Hello everyone, so my name is Manu, uh, I lead our consulting team for Roboyo for South Europe and I'm very pleased today that I'm joined here by Fabian from Vitesco. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about supply chain and how intelligent automation is actually supporting Vitesco as we speak. And uh, maybe like passing the stage right away to you, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can you introduce yourself, tell us why you're here and also a little bit the company so everyone is aware about Vitesco? Yeah, sure, of course. So let's start with the company. So we start from the end. Um, Vitesco is relatively a new brand as a corporation, although our DNA has over 150 years uh, of background in the automotive industry. <laughs> we just had our IPO and our spin-off from a mother company uh, one year ago, one year to the date almost, and um, part of this uh, change and focus on the electrification business in the automotive industry, it's also about modernizing our cultural mindset, our way of working and so on. So that's the reason I'm here. Digit digital transformation and digitalization is part of our, our new strategic approaches and direction. So yeah, that's what I'm here to do on the SEM organization. Cool. And, and your role at the moment is really kind of to actually bring the digitization to supply chain, right? That's one part of the role. The, the main part is still to protect the performance engine, which is all the processes and systems that are around the supply chain execution people right. that do the job day to day in more than 26 of our production plants and central functions. It's about making them the life better and easier, right? Today is very stringent, the VUCA world, the crisis management, the shortages, the geopolitical situation we're having is stressing the su supply chain constantly for the past 24 months or even 36 now we are dealing with troubleshooting crisis management on a day to day and that's of course adding additional workload to our employees so our management and leadership decided yeah let's do something about it what can we do with the uh, spin of an IPO that we just did we carried over RPA, which is what I call right now the low-hanging fruit, right, on technologies to make the life of the employees easier. And when we start trying it out, we said, yeah, this, this is working, this has potential, this has benefit, but the big question mark about, is this really giving us business impact? That we cannot, couldn't answer at the time, and I'm telling you nine, ten months ago, uh, when we were asked that question. And now that after doing a, a little bit of talking to different people, we did some research with Gardner guys, we talk to you, of course, because you're part of our frame contracts and, and current partners with, w which we are working with. We talk to UiPath, we talk to the Celonis guys recently as well and uh, other companies in regards of how can we make business impact automating the processes, right? Rather than just introducing technologies and do citizens of the developers of the world and this type of thing. So we took it uh, one step back and do, okay, let's do be due diligent Let's see what do we need. Then we came across with this uh, intelligent process automation out of what Gartner calls the hyper automation loop, right? Uh, you have single task automation, which is great for me, but it's not great for the company, right? But then you have the next level, which is process automation, has a wider scope of automation with a further reach to the business, with a further reach to the benefit of the employees, right? And they say, okay, this sounds promising. Let's see what it is about. And uh, by analyzing and talking to our IT colleagues, of course, through the head of SEM and the head of operations, we said this is an approach we believe will work. Mm -hmm. And they gave us the confidence to do a POV, POC, which we started in, in one of our, well, two of our um, strategic uh, production locations in, um, in uh, Best Coast country in Europe. And we said, yeah, let's give it a try and see what this leads us. So we can really judge if we will achieve a business impact by applying multiple technologies to the same process to make the life of our SEM employees easier and better. Oh, very cool. And I think you said a couple of things there that are actually quite relevant because mm -hmm. we have a, a master class later today yeah. on, the, on, on this whole approach that, uh, that you guys kind of <coughs> took alongside us. And one, one of the things that you mentioned there is that you started with the business impact, right? With the value. And the technology comes a little bit uh, later, right? And uh, yeah. ma maybe to ask you one question very, very quickly, right? So our masterclass is actually titled The Value of a Structured Discovery Approach, right? Yes. So, so what's the value, right? Why starting with the discovery first, basically? Yeah, so basically, I mean, we're automotive, right? And, and a shareholder-driven company, so nothing moves if we don't see the actual financial benefit. And because we are automotive, we are used to work on a structural approach, right? We have our phases, we have our setups, our milestones, and then we move forward. And we said, rather than what I, I keep listening uh, from yesterday, actually, it's like, yeah, we just bring the technologies and we enable people to use it. 
Yes, but that doesn't, we can measure that, right? And it's very hard anyway to measure the impact of that. So we said, no, let's take a consolidated example. Let's talk to the people. Let's reach out with your, the experience that you guys bring in regards of automating processes and finding those opportunities to say, hey, is this going to be really meaningful? Are we going to cover all those unmet needs that we can cover and also we don't know about, right? And through this discovery approach and rapid process scan uh, activities that we did together, we uncover and unearth a lot of those unmet needs that typically are forgotten because we are always thinking, and I have to say the last 18 years, I have always been a pure SAP, just look SAP and let's enrich SAP. And now that's not the case, right? We have much other technologies that help us to enhance our way of working faster, but that also has to come with the mindset of accepting we need to have more than one technology right. managing our day-to-day -day business, right? So, and interacting to each other, that's key and essential. Otherwise, we move the manual work from the day-to-day -to, -day to the manual work of making the two tools to talk to each other. So, right. And, yeah. I, and I think like the, the rapid process scan, like in a nutshell, it's like a classic, let's say, consultancy <coughs> exercise of doing a lot of interviews, right? And mm -hmm. one of the things that when I remember when we were like framing a little bit the project, how to do it, one of the things that was very important for you was connected with SAP, mm -hmm. that we also basically bring a little bit to the challenging, can we improve the end system? Is it a yeah. quick win there? And then the other thing that was quite important for you was being tech agnostic, right? So not only just looking for cases for RPA, right? Yeah. But actually first find the case and then in the second phase decide, okay, this is more like a BPM case, an RPA case, and so on. Correct. So wh why was that so important? Because it's all about the process and the people, right? It's not about the one technology to use or the one vendor or software brand to use. Uh, it's about the day-to-day -day activities, right? And what we know from the past and what the way we work with value stream mapping is, first you need to get rid of the non-value added activities, so we are able then to really optimize and improve. And now we are optimizing and improving not only the process, but also the way the process is executed. So that's for us key. That's something we will not move out <laughs> for by any reasons. And the other one was also in the change management approach, you also need to accept the fact that even myself, no, and I was surprised with the results that you can look at them later, expectations on how much SAP can do and should do, or I know the problem and or I know the solution is to do this and that in my SAP system, it turned out to be the bare minimum. I mean, right. it barely made the, the bar, the chart, right? Uh, out of the top 10 uh, topics, it just made the 1% out of it. Where we f where we, when we discovered a whole new things that we need to do to fit our digital core SAP. So in, in, in that case, it's like, yeah, these are the unmet needs that need to start listening because they are needs, right? We have extreme users that are really keen that we are adding new processes, new ways of working, not because we want, it's because the needs now of our resilient and um, buka supply chain situation is, is driving us, right? right? And we can, as a central function, react that fast. Right. So we need to accept that and enable and be more freedom to act on that side and enable the pioneering side of, on, our, on our employees. Yeah, very cool. And maybe not, not to give away too much in terms of <laughs> results as well, but yeah. uh, in a nutshell, so we did the, the whole project end to end, took about six weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, from those six weeks, we had a preparation phase, which is done kind of offline. Mm -hmm. You had the, the core of the engagement, which is really going on site, which was yeah. quite a big thing after so many years of doing uh, kind of these projects remotely due to COVID to actually go back, interview people face to face. And then we had the business case in the end, which is also an exercise you can do offline and do all the playbacks, right? And in two weeks where we had like four consultants, like uh, together with your team, we were like six mm -hmm. doing interviews in parallel. We actually managed to, for two plans, to map 240 processes, right? Yeah. And, uh, so. How was the, essentially the, the results there? Were you surprised on how, how broad it went? Like, just to get a sense of well, your feel for the project. I think expectations were high because we said, let's take the whole supply chain team that it's uh, involved in these two plans. So we talk about more than 150 FTEs involved in all this, in the 220 processes that we touched for both plans in total. So in that case was like, yeah, what are, are we going to get out of talking to the people, reading, going through the documentation, the, the process flows, the, the, the flow charts and so on, and really identify the deviation. So for me, it's a typical value stream mapping, cross-functional diagram, but to see it now with the opportunity baseline for technology automation, that was a, a surprising outcome, I, I have to say. Uh, it is important that we acknowledge that this is a teamwork, right? So you guys brought what we don't have, so we always have to borrow 
those type of knowledge and skills like your process automation expertise, your tech agnostic uh, mindset in regards of approaching the, the, the baseline potentials. And from our side, we put from our central team, our global process managers, which are like, yeah, I understand your need, but is it a valuable yes or no? Is it a need real yes or no, right? So that's the, the, the role my department play. And then on top of that, we brought the IT team, right? I, I can't do anything regarding to tech if my IT guys are, or IT guys, my IT partners are never uh, next to me, right? Right. Especially when we are starting the journey. And I think at that time, Rodrigo, now Karsten, played a very good role enabling that. Also our ITBA guys uh, in, in regards of understanding and also helping to see the automation need can first be resolved by our SAP because that's the first thing that we need to think about. And if not, it makes sense that another so technology takes it over, whatever that technology is. And uh, also the, the drive with the people, right? So we talked to the plant manager, the SEM heads in the organization, all our uh, community in regards to the leadership team to have the engagement and most important to have the total labor cost <laughs> in regards of the assessment because we wanted to have, and we, we discussed it, right? Do you want a theoretical ROI baseline or do you want as close as possible to reality? I said, you know what? Let's take it as close as possible. So in that case, we did have to uh, make Probably use of, the, of all the data from our controlling guys to say, yeah, I want to see what are the total labor costs as a key reference to really see from where I can relate financially to my ben benefits, right? For, for the measure of the impact or the what now it's called OKRs is more about how much my people can enjoy their life better, faster and less frustrated for not doing all these tedious tasks, right? right. Uh, we were talking uh, in a short week, one of the examples, right, with the material shortages that one of the outcome is, yeah, these guys spend four hours every day, right? right. Searching to how to resolve the material shortage and they stop, not because they finish, just because they run they out of time, because, because they have to anyway take care of right. the day-to-day, -day, right? So these type of things that you have to acknowledge, it's our day-to-day -day right now. Right. So we need to definitely change that way so they go back to really normalizing the supply chain, right? right. Rather than just troubleshooting. Right. I, I think, uh, so I'm, I'm not a supply chain guy, mm -hmm. right? And I, I learned a ton actually doing the, the project. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, for real, a lot of uh, use cases that I had never come across from an automation angle. And I think for, for me, it would be also be very cool to go a little bit deeper in this material shortage, right? Because I think yesterday, one of the themes that came in the Salonis presentation or a lot of the manufacturing uh, like talks that we were having is that the supply chain at the moment is very stressed, right? Yeah. And uh, and that that process in a nutshell, right? The, the description is how do people that plan raw material, right, mm -hmm. make sure that the production line doesn't stop, right? So they look at material shortages in advance, and then they have different levers that they can pull. They can see if intercompany they have basically you know materials elsewhere that they can kind of ship to the, the plant they can see if stuff is stuck in quality that yep. they can actually re back, re, re -loop back into inventory right so what what is the process actually today when they do it manually and what is the thing that we are envisioning now going forward yeah so basically the, the translation of the manual is the search and the hunt for alternative uh, solutions to replace and to avoid the material shortage right so our key core right now is keep our production lines running and keep our customer production lines running and supplied. We have a limitation due to the current situation, but in any case, we have always to keep focus on that. And that's a key point that today, it's not automized. It's something that has to be manual. It's on the knowledge of people. And it's the options and the alternative as distributed to several systems and several tools and several processes, which require time case by case, unit by unit, part number by part number, to find out if it's possible or not. And in all these decision uh, trees and flows, the opportunity to automate came with a mix of technologies. What well, we said, yes, we need multiple technologies applied to a single process to really have an impact, right? Where we said from four hours a day, it takes for a person to do, to really say, in the morning, I come and I have a result so I can do and review my decisions. Only take decisions because, of course, we want our SEM employees to still be always in the driver's seat to take the final decision, to review and analyze, which is what we want from our, from our employees, right? To use the brain, to extrapolate and experience, to take the best decision possible, not to search for what are the options to then, oh, I run out of time, I, can, I don't even have time to make the decision or to make the right assessment for the decision. 
So in that case, that's where we, we say, okay, a mix of uh, business pro intelligent business process management with low code, with uh, RPA mix will be the best because you need for every single unmet need a different type of technology right. because you have different triggers, right? And I need a holistic view to just see everything and take decisions. Right. So that for me was the biggest takeaway that I can see that we, we make our topics more efficient. And just to be clear, we are still in the prototype phase. Don't think this is up and running, <laughs> guys. We are almost there to deliver it to the finish line. And yeah, we, we expect this is also a, a key factor to say, yes, you know, uh, Michael from Bayern was saying, yeah, typically when you are growing and overloaded on work, you want technologies to, right. to come and help you to get rid of all this, right? So you can normalize your day-to-day -day, uh, work. And this is exactly what we're aiming for. Yeah, very cool. So, Fabian, last question. And uh, before sure. that, like, uh, <laughs> like I, I learned that time with Vitesco, I think it's a very exciting approach that you have to digitalization, right? So you did the discovery, you found the opportunities, you know which technologies you need, you have a kind of a sequence to the whole thing. What's next? How is the future now looking like? Promising, <laughs> I can tell you that. So uh, as you know, one of the results was we need five different technologies. Right. We had only two technologies uh, at that time, uh, a few months ago. Right now we're in the final sourcing together with what the IT is uh, together uh, with us in the final sourcing uh, decision for our process mining approach, our task mining approach. Uh, we are also finalizing our BPM uh, uh, software to bring into in our infrastructure. So this momentum is good. Uh, we have uh, a good use case in regards of a function in a corporate organization to, to drive and to become that North Star or that uh, lighthouse, as it is typically called in, in our industry, to really then start the traction of our corporation, right? To really jump into this uh, hyper automation loop, process automation uh, journey. So it's always better to have an in-house internal uh, mature uh, model already running. So then you can start pulling the other ones and see if the other ones to move ahead of us and, you know, gamification and start challenging ourselves to become better and faster. Oh, very cool. <laughs> so, a lot of things. Muchas gracias. De nada. We are in contacto. Yeah. Thank you, Manu. <laughs> Ciao. See you. See you guys.